Hey, how you doing, Justin? Back with you for another kind of thinky lesson. Another one that I'm hoping will actually make you a lot better guitar player. We're going to be talking about why it's important to slow down your guitar journey a bit. You'll be a much better guitar player for it. The, I don't want to come across that I'm anti-progress or anti-technology, but the world has changed so much in the last 10 years, and the amount of information available to us has just exploded. Whether we want to learn about cooking or cars or guitars, we can learn anything at any time. The information is out there. And because of that, often we feel, I feel it as well, that we should be learning new stuff all the time. It's like, well, I can learn that. Oh, learn this. And then you go down these rabbit holes of learning stuff. But actually, we're not really learning it. We feel like we are at the time because we're kind of absorbing this stuff, but we very rarely give it a chance to digest properly, to become part of us. It becomes this thing. We learn this thing and we try it out and then, oh, there's a new thing. We get into that. We learn that. and We go over here and we learn that. But we haven't absorbed it properly. And there's a lot of studies around saying that we we learn, we lose 90% of what we learn. Now, that's a, I can't remember the study. It's a bit of a made-up number, I, su I suspect. But we lose a lot of what we learn. I notice it as well. And one of the key things that I think that we used to do back in the day, you know, in the Stone Age when I grew up, is there wasn't as much information available, so we spent more time on the bits that we could get. It wasn't like now where you can go on YouTube and you can learn anything. You could, you know, whatever it is that you want to know about guitar, there's going to be there, right? But that doesn't mean that you should always be pursuing that. And I think that having a kind of a, a, a syllabus of things that you should be learning, a path to be going on and learning things in that order and really trying to digest the stuff is really, really valuable. If you can stop yourself from going down these rabbit holes and learning things that are, you know, just not appropriate for your level of ability, you'll, you'll progress better. You'll learn the things that you're supposed to be doing better. You'll absorb it and it'll make you a better guitar player. Unless you're totally new to my videos, I'm really hoping you've heard me say before that practice makes permanent. Practice does not make permanent perfect, which is what we all heard growing up as kids. Einstein famously said that uh, the idea of doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is a definition of insanity. Practice makes permanent, so you need to practice perfectly, right? You don't want to be practicing the wrong thing. You want to be practicing the right thing. And to practice things perfectly, to get it right, the way to do it is to slow down. You're very rarely going to be able to get something right the first time if you go at it too fast. S doing it really slowly and carefully and getting it perfect, then practicing that perfect thing and making it permanent is the best way to learn probably anything except for maybe riding a bike. Riding a bike, real slow, really difficult. So there are going to be some exceptions to this rule, but it works nearly all the time. If you've ever written any computer code, you know it's easier and faster to take your time and get the code right the first time than it is to spend hours debugging stuff looking for some dumb syntax error that you made. Now, if you think about trying to play the guitar, let's just pick changing between chords. Imagine you had to teach that to a robotic arm. Imagine how much code you would have to do. Think about it for a second. Each line of code for each finger movement, the pressure, the movement between the chords, how you have to do it, at the timing of what you have to do, they have to all operate at the same time. There's a lot going on there. And that's what's happening when you're trying to learn stuff yourself. You're writing code in your brain. Obviously, it's not exactly the same and there's faults in the analogy, but it's a really good way of thinking about it. Now, once you've written the code correctly, it's relatively easy to speed things up. You might need to develop some muscles or some stamina in the muscles. But once you know what you're doing, whether it's a scale or a chord or a lick or whatever, if you've got the code right, it's a lot easier to speed it up. A general rule that I use myself is I want to play something 10 times perfectly from memory before I speed it up. If I can do it 10 times in a row without a mistake, from memory, without looking at a page, then I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to make that a little bit faster now. And usually I'll find that each step of the way, I'll use something like that, depends on what it is. But usually I'll be aiming for 10 times perfectly from memory before I allow myself to speed stuff up. 
But what if we make a mistake? We're all human. I still make mistakes when I'm learning things. It happens. So what do you do about it when you make a mistake? Well, there's this really interesting thing, and I don't exactly understand how it works or why it works, but it definitely does. If you make a mistake when you're learning something new, immediately stop. Tell yourself that there was a mistake there and start again from the beginning. Don't just continue on. If you're learning a scale and you've, you know, you've got the scale diagram up and you're like, it starts with the second finger there, okay, and then it's this little finger, and then it's the first finger down there, and then, okay, and then it's the second finger. Ah, and you play a wrong note. Stop. Ah, no, that was wrong, man. Okay, let's do it again. Start again from the beginning. I don't, like I said, I don't really know how this works, but it, I'm, I've tested on myself, had loads of students report back over the years. This really, really works. If you make a mistake, stop, start again, clean slate, start to write that code again. Okay, it's, if you could just continue, it seems to somehow solidify the mistake into the code and you're very likely to find that you make the mistake again. If not the next time, in a couple of goes time, you'll make the same mistake. So just stop, Start again and make sure you don't make that same mistake. If you make the same mistake twice, you're really in trouble, right? So just don't do that. If, especially if you've made a mistake twice, you're like, this is a problem now, man. Don't do this. So just really take it so slowly that you can't make the mistake. That slowly, as slow as it takes that you make no mistakes. But this is not just about getting it right. It's about how much we retain I don't really see the point in spending hours and hours of my time practicing something if I'm going to forget 90% of it. Like, that just doesn't make any sense. So you really want to make sure that you get things right and then you work on retaining those things and actually being able to do them, to use them to make music. Much more useful to have five licks that you can play from memory and use and make up a solo then have 50 licks that you have to continually be looking at some lick book for. Like, I never saw Eric Clapton on stage with a book of licks that he was going to pull out. It just, it's, it's not right. So you really want to think about your retention. And again, that's about slowing down, especially young people. You know, when I was young, I made the same mistakes. I was always in a hurry to learn new things. I always rushed through, made loads of mistakes. I, but I would encourage you not to be like that. It's one of the advantages, actually, of learning as an older person is that you tend to be a bit more patient and not in so much of a hurry. When we learn slower, our retention rate goes up massively. Our ability to draw on that information is really important. And over the long term, slow learners retain an awful lot more than fast learners do. I'm going to give you a little quote now from uh, Daniel Kahneman uh, from the book Thinking Fast and Slow. I'm going to read it to make sure I get it right. But intelligence is not only the ability to reason, it's also the ability to find relevant material in your memory and to deploy attention when needed. That's a, it's such a massive, profound sentence. It's only a short one, but it's a really big deal. This ability to be able to find the right thing and for it to come out and it be kind of automated. That's kind of the part that, you know, the practice makes permanent. You want these things, these musical ideas to be kind of instinctive. You want them just to happen. I don't think about scales and note choices and bending in tune or what the chords are. Okay, none of that stuff. I don't think about it. I've practiced it over and over again, slowly and carefully, and I've made it permanent to the point where I don't have to think about it. I can recall that information without even thinking about recalling it. It just happens. And this is, again, this is part of this slow learning thing, learning things, a few things really well. When you improvise with the minor pentatonic scale, you don't want to be still thinking about what the notes are in the minor pentatonic scale. You don't even want to be thinking at all. It just happens. The music just happens. But of course, it doesn't just happen unless you put the work in beforehand the slow, careful practice that you repeat over and over again to make it permanent in your memory so that you can recall it whenever you want and you recall it instinctively without even having to think about it. It's such a big deal, this slowing down, learning a few things and not being in a hurry to try and get all of this other information that you're never going to be able to use or that you're never going to remember. I've just noticed that the, the last six months I've been I've started my journey on Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I've really, you know, been a fan of martial arts most of my life, but I started this new form about five, six months ago, and I notice it myself. There are things that I'm learning if I try and go to too many classes and learn different techniques. 
they never come out. When I'm having a roll, when I'm having, you know, doing some grappling, I don't remember them. There's a few techniques where I've given them lots more practice and they're starting, just starting, to happen instinctively now where I don't have to think about, oh, I'm in side control, I can do this. And it just happens. So that, you know, I'm noticing it again every time I learn a new thing, the importance of learning a few things really well and not overwhelming myself with information that I'm not going to be able to recall in the right moment. I've got a few more tips for you that are going to help you retain your information. The first one is about chunking. So whenever you're trying to learn something that's really big, you want to break it up into little sections and learn each bit one at a time. If I'm trying to learn, say, a 12-bar blues, a solo a Tommy Emanuel song or something, some, something fairly complicated, I'll break it down into bars or phrases, depending on what's more appropriate. I'll just learn that one bar to start off with. I'll practice it, learn it, see what's going on, try and get it under my fingers, memorize it, yeah? Can I do it from memory 10 times perfectly? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Then I'll learn the second bar and I'll spend my time just on focused on the second bar, looking at the music, checking it out, getting the fingering right, making sure I can do it, practice it 10 times from memory. And then I join it onto the first bar. And this is really important. So I'm joining the first bar to the second bar, playing them both together from memory. Then I learn the third bar. Okay, and I go through, learn the third bar on its own, make sure I get it all right, and then I join it on to the first two. So I'm playing bar one, two, and three. Now, the argument that I hear against this is that you always end up being better at the first bit than you are later on. So what I would generally do is once I've learned the first section, let's say the first 12 bars, and I can play it all, I've joined it on, obviously those last ones might need a little bit more work to get up to scratch, but very often in a song you find that there are some parts that are very easy and some parts that are very hard. So what I would suggest is you go through chunking it, learning it a bar at a time, joining it on each time. Once you can play the whole 12 bar sequence or section, then you go through and work again on the bits that are weakest. Because you probably find it won't be like just the last couple of bars, the ending turnaround or whatever is unlikely to be the hardest part. So those things will probably be at that level of that first part already. You'll often find that techniques thread their way through a song as well. So once you've learned the technique in that first bar, it will make learning the rest easier. So then you just go back and you focus on the bars that you're finding challenging. Okay, so chunks at a time all together into a section and then go back and revise the parts that you're finding hardest and some other tips for you one make sure you're using a timer again this is just to do with the efficiency of your practice i've done whole lessons on why i think it's a uh, you know the, the psychological effects of using timers when you practice but definitely like a little five minute timer hit your practice really stay focused and then have a little breather again at the end the breather is really important, but as well, once you've got your practice routine sorted out into little sections and you know what it is that you're doing, you can, you'll can kind of know better like, well, I'm, am I taking that thing off my practice routine yet? Do I really know it? Have I absorbed it properly? It helps with this. If you find you're changing your routine all the time, that's a good indicator that maybe you're not absor absorbing things properly, that you need to maybe slow down a little bit more. Just need to scroll down on my little notepad here. Okay, next one, revising old materials. This is a really, really big deal. Can't remember the name of the guy who came and did a lecture at the conservatorium when I studied at Tasmanian Conservatorium of Music. It was about classical guitar. But he suggested when you learn a piece, like a, a song or whatever, piece of music, that you play it, you practice it, you get it right. Once you've got it right, you leave it a day and then you play it again. Make sure that you got it right. Then you leave it a week and you play it again from memory. And you only bring out the paper if you absolutely have to. You really spend your time trying to drag it out of your memory. It's a, what it's, happens there is there's something to do with the way uh, memory stores information in the kind of in the hard drive, not in the RAM part, the short term memory, the way it's stored in the long term memory. It's almost like there's a separate bit of long term memory of things that actually I really need to remember. And by really drawing something out without just grabbing the paper out straight away, really dragging that information back, only using the paper if you absolutely need to, or the cue, whatever it is that you need, you know, your notes that it seems to put it in this other section, which makes it a little bit more permanent. If you've done it after that week, then leave it two weeks and then bring it up again. If you've waited two weeks, wait a month, bring it up again. If you've done it a month, six months, bring it back up again. Twelve months later, bring it up again. If you can do that, you will never forget it. 
I, this is the weirdest thing. I did exactly this over the, the course I was studying classical guitar. I can still remember all of those pieces perfectly. And I did exactly that. I learned them, did it a week later, two weeks later, month later, six months later, a year later, and I can't forget them. I don't think I could forget them if I tried. Okay, so whenever I learn something now that I actually really want to make sure I remember, particularly I do it with what I call party pieces, so songs that I probably want to play at a guitar shop if I'm testing something out or whatever. Those pieces, I've got a little list and reminders of when I need to run them again. And it, it follows that same pattern. Okay, so do check it out. Week, two weeks, month, six months, year, you won't forget it. So I've got one more tip for you, and then I'll let you get on with your practice. This is a real good one, and this is explain the things that you're learning. It's a, such a big deal. It's the biggest gift that you get as a teacher is it when you go to explain something, you have to really understand it properly, especially if you've got a student that asks lots of questions that makes you question your beliefs in things. Why are you doing this? How does that work? You really, really want to understand stuff properly. Now, if you're not a teacher, if you're not actually teaching guitar, you can write it down. It's what I do with stuff like Stoic philosophy and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I write down in my notes all of the stuff as if I'm explaining it to someone else. I, do, I just did one with my, the Stoic evening meditation. It's the thing I do every evening. I'd kind of review my day and I think about what I did and what I could have done better and all that sort of stuff. But in order to make sure that I really truly understood it, I wrote an article about it. This is how it works. This is what I do. This is why I think. And it made me question so many things that by the end of the article, I really felt like I'd learned a ton. So think about doing that when you're learning something new on the guitar, you're learning in the minor pentatonic scale. Think about wh why are you using those fingers? Imagine you've just taught it to someone and they say, why did you use that finger? Why is it on that fret? Can you use different fingers? Does it matter the order of the notes that you're playing? Does the picking matter? What picking did you... All of those questions, you want to make sure you know the answers to all of those things. And the more you can question those things yourself, the better and the stronger your knowledge will be. And that will definitely make you a better guitar player and a better musician, and maybe even a happier person too. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember, if you've got any questions, you can leave them in the discussion tab over on the website. Me and the official Justin Guitar Guides check the comments pretty regularly, try and answer as many as we can. And if it's a common question, we pop it into the text for the lesson. So you might want to read the text as well. Make sure that we haven't uh, answered that question already before you ask it. Have yourself an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care. Bye-bye.